We're winding down to the end of Operation Grand Heist in Black Ops 4, at least on PlayStation 4 we are. Xbox One and PC will have a week later, but we're coming to a close no matter what way you spin it, and that's probably to many players' satisfaction. Personally, I really enjoyed a lot of the stuff that came along with it, as I always do with new operations and content launches. The prospect of those new toys, in a sense, and something more to work towards is always great, though we may lose interest over the course of the coming weeks to follow. But I personally enjoyed things like Lockup and Casino as DLC maps, though many may disagree. I enjoyed some of the camos we had gotten over the course of the event as well, and while we have a new operation coming up, that means quite a lot more. We know that we're going to be getting three new multiplayer maps within the Black Ops Pass, a new Operation Contraband stream, presumably a new specialist for MP, presumably another Blackout character from the Black Ops Pass, and a whole plethora of other things, including new reserve items, which unfortunately is where probably most of the cooler cosmetic stuff is going to be. But as of recently, over the last couple of weeks, I've had an increasing number of inquiries and comments from tweets and even some Instagram comments asking, well, what happens to our cases that we've saved up? So today we're going to investigate just that, talk about it, and give you guys a little bit of a tip as to what I'd say is probably the biggest thing you should do before Operation 4 rolls around in Black Ops 4. Also, by the way, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button because all this upcoming week we're going to be taking a look at new Op 4 teasers, and then after that, well, we're right there into breaking down all the new content features, maps, and so on and so forth. So with 65% of viewers not subscribed, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button and also the bell to be notified with every upload. But I digress. First things first, will your crates and cases reset? To my knowledge, absolutely not. Your cases and crates will still carry over to the next event. And while there is no precedent set before, as stackable cases were introduced within Operation Grand Heist, there seems to be no logical reason as to why they wouldn't, so I'm willing to put money that these end up stacking. I end up seeing a couple of mentions that Treyarch confirmed this somewhere officially, but for the life of me, I can't seem to find the link or the post to give you that 1000% definitive answer, but just thinking it through logically, that would create such a massive nightmare from a PR perspective that I don't think that they would even have that even cross their minds. I know there's been some things within Black Ops 4 already that are incredibly stupid that are really like, why would you even think of that? But with all that considered, and then going into this, I can't see them doing that. As well, with people being completely unable to open reserves if they have every reserve item, that nullifies the need for any grindable reward that the tiers would continue to offer. So, unless you're working towards that next operation, it doesn't make sense for those players to really still be earning anything to begin with. But speaking my thoughts and apparently what was again covered by Treyarch, you're safe in my books. So, if you have cases or crates that you're saving up, you should be good. And truth be told, that's actually the one thing that I think you should really do to prep for Operation 4 coming up, is not open your reserves and save them for not this upcoming Tuesday, but the following Tuesday when Op 4 rolls around on PlayStation 4, and then a week to follow for Xbox One and PC. So if you're one of those people that do open up your reserve cases or crates immediately, maybe hold off on them and start to stack them up with your playtime. While you might not have as many at the end of the operation going into Op 4 as those that may have been stacking from the very beginning or halfway through the event, think about it this way. If you don't have the items that you want now, your possible rates of earning them won't change all that much from today compared to in a week and a half's time. But instead of just going for that Kuramaku KN57 variant or the Vacation Hudson or John or Jane Doe, whatever you want, you can end up having the chance to get those again come a week and a half later and the chance of getting the new content that is inevitably going to be added in. Maybe there's a really sick Paladin Mark II weapon variant. Maybe there's a sick Blackout character that you really want, or maybe there's the sickest reactive camo yet to date, or Mastercraft in reserves, to which, well, you can utilize that time that you have now to get a head start on those items. And unlike the beginning of an operation, you're not really missing out on all that much. You're only going to have, say, 10 days or so in which you can play catch up for things that you already wanted, or again, you can use that time to compound your reserve cases, wait, and then open them up so that you end up having the chance to get even the newer stuff that launches in that 10 days. So you could actually be ahead of the pack if you start to save up your crates or cases now, or if you have been for quite some time. So in that sense, if you do open up your cases individually, maybe hold off again so you can maybe try and get something cooler and jump in right at the very beginning of Op 4 and get some of that cooler stuff in your inventory. Now, of course, this still won't negate the chance that you might get just more stickers or something you don't necessarily care about, but again, it comes down to the principle of would you rather a sticker with no chance of new stuff now 
or a sticker later with potentially a decent chance of getting something cool that no one else really has at that time. But I digress, save your cases, try and wait until next operation to open those up, but in the meantime, let's talk about how you can compound those even more so you have as many cases as possible going into that next operation to maximize your chances of getting something cool. To me, there's a bunch of different ways here to maximize your case earning, but let's talk about what I think are the absolute best. Currently, I think Deathmatch Domination is one of my go-to modes for this. While it's not necessarily the longest game in terms of game time available that counts towards it, it's currently the most that is actually guaranteed. This and whenever either Chaos Modes or Endurance Modes come along, you'll end up being able to have at least 13 to 15 minutes of in-game time on offer, and that's the important part because your tiers don't progress by the time in which you spend in the menus, the pre-game lobby, surfing your black market, or wherever it may be. It's all in-game time. So you want to be able to stay in the game as much as possible, and your modes like TDM, One in the Chamber, and so on only last a few minutes. So you'll have, on the cumulative time spent, a much smaller percentage of that going towards your tiers being progressed compared to, say, Deathmatch Domination, Chaos Modes, or Endurance Modes. And I reference all of them because we usually have one at a time, sometimes multiple, but we also don't know how the playlist will refresh coming up this Tuesday leading into the last week on PlayStation 4 and last two weeks on Xbox One and PC. So in order to keep this info still relatively accurate, I wanted to cover the bases on that one. So Deathmatch Domination definitely I think is by far, if you're an MP person especially, your best option here as of right now. Additionally, Blackout is absolutely fantastic. And listen, I'm a Blackout guy. I absolutely love Blackout. It's cool if you don't, but if you can stay alive for the majority of the standard game or even win, that's the absolute most time that you'll ever be able to get from Black Ops 4 in-game. That is, unless you take Chaos Control to all the rounds or complete an insane comeback for Endurance Domination, which those, specifically Chaos Control, can last 30 to 40 minutes per match. But both of those are, one, never really around all that much, and two, very situational that unless you end up having a party of a full six-man, you probably won't be able to control those circumstances of all that. So, for the sake of Blackout, the standard map, not Alcatraz, because Alcatraz is roughly around... 10 to 13 minutes each at the longest those matches will last the standard map will usually take you on average about 20 to 23 minutes to be the last player or player standing so if you can find yourself a squad you play for the win and then you either make it to the final circle or even better you're the ones who do win you're going to end up getting a tier or even two cases because if you go past tier 100 you get a case and then also the time to reserve cases you'll end up having the ability to progress every three matches or so and trust me when it's a night and you're just chilling with your friends playing, that time goes by so much faster than you'd think. Outside of those two specific examples that we can end up giving in terms of regular modes for MP, your things like Control, Domination, and Safeguard are all great bets because they're the longest of those regular modes. The limited time modes will come up every so often, but these ones are standard and will be there for the rest of the game. And so in that sense, you'll end up being able to chip away at those any time that you want, even if those LTMs aren't necessarily there. Additionally, end up taking advantage of that second Zombies tier skip. While Zombies doesn't necessarily award you for the time played, and probably for the fear of somebody finding an AFK glitch where it just would grind out 100 hours of in-game playtime by just letting your controller sit idle, Zombies has the additional tier skip on top of getting to round 15, which covers the basis for merits and blackout and also a win and MP. They also end up having their daily callings, which usually are pretty easy challenges that can be knocked out within 15 to 30 minutes time, and so therefore get a second tier boost on that day by just simply completing that challenge so if you guys want to take advantage of that that's also there additionally we end up seeing that tier bonuses are available from special orders if you have any special orders that you want specifically they've been offering five percent tier boosts in progression upwards of 25 percent at that cap that would end up bringing your total down to only 45 minutes of in-game time needed as opposed to a full hour which is honestly pretty cool that if you end up thinking about it in the long run it does help out tremendously Plus, you can end up getting some cool stuff that you might be interested in. While I might not have as much personal value or interest in the uniforms, the things like the Cordite Mastercraft, the SOG Party Rock camo, I ended up getting those, and today the Cypher order was added in and available that are somewhat worthwhile, plus they end up helping get you those tier bonuses. So, while I'm not necessarily trying to advocate towards those, if you're interested in that kind of stuff, it does help out as well. I also wouldn't be surprised if we end up seeing a 2 times tier boost event coming on the way. We saw one of those already happen within Grand Heist, and with it ending out the operation now coming up, it'd be fitting to see a sort of last chance 
chance or last hurrah event going on to allow players to not only get as much going into Op 4 as they possibly can, but also for those players that may not have completed the Contraband stream just yet. And here's the thing, these tips don't necessarily just apply to those cases. If you have any of the initial contraband stream laid out, you'll also want to take advantage of this as well as much as possible, because unlike those cases, those items don't actually carry over. We may see the weapons return as Mark II weapon variants later in time, like how we saw the SWAT and the Daemon, but those aren't guaranteed. And additionally, the cosmetic stuff outside of, say, the First Strike reactive camos, which were associated with the weaponry, we haven't seen any of that kind of stuff again. We may not ever see those things like the Warden, your Augur Mastercraft, your Casino-themed Vapor Reactive Camo, the APB Maddox Reactive, and so on and so forth. Those things may be gone for good. So it's definitely a good idea to jump on and get as much chances to end up earning all of those if you haven't done so already, and also start to earn as many reserve cases as possible so you can end up jumping into Operation 4 with a lot of cool stuff potentially on hand. So that said, that's where we're going to wrap it up here. I wanted to give you guys some input and some feedback on how best to end out Operation Grand Heist in your Black Ops 4 experience so far, rounding into the next operation. And again, maybe even answer some questions that a lot of players may have had and that I've gotten a lot of comments about recently. So let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Black Ops 4, MP, Blackout, Zombies. We get you covered the best of updates, news, information, tips, tricks, all that good stuff. So if any of the issue, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. Especially with Operation 4 coming up and looming on the horizon, we'll keep you up to date with all kinds of stuff here with that. So stick it right here on the channel. But if you guys also want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, those are the best places to get connected outside of YouTube. Practically live on both those. So if you guys want to check out a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, that link is down there in the description below. So that's it now. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Mazda Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.